Okay, everybody in 224, I just wanted to give you a little snippet, maybe a little demonstration or example of blood pressure regulation. So, keep in mind, as I said in the lecture video, we try to regulate our blood pressure primarily day to day, moment to moment, using the nervous system, controlling heart rate and vessel size. Increasing the heart rate will make your blood pressure go up. So when we want blood pressure to increase, we use the sympathetic division of the ANS spitting norepinephrine onto the SA node, increasing heart rate. All other things equal, if you just increase your heart rate, your blood pressure goes up. By the same token, we use the sympathetic division primarily to control vessel size and vasoconstriction, narrowing the hose, will also cause blood pressure to go up. And we have reflexes that will do both of these things together. So we will increase our heart rate and constrict the vessels in an attempt to make blood pressure go up. Why would you want your blood pressure to go up? Because it has fallen for some reason. You could have lost some blood, you could have a heart disorder, a disease, it could be any number of things. On the opposite side, if we reduce heart rate, all other things staying equal, your blood pressure will go down. You're reducing stroke volume, you're reducing cardiac output, your heart rate is down, well, not so much stroke volume, but cardiac output for sure, and your blood pressure falls. Vasodilation. If we allow the vessels to dilate, and again, remember your bias anatomically here, we're talking about muscular arteries and arterioles primarily with vessel size, vasodilation will cause blood pressure to fall. So if we want blood pressure to go down, we'll do both of these things together as a nervous system reflex, spit acetylcholine onto the SA node to reduce heart rate and force of contraction, lowers your blood pressure, dilate the blood vessels, bigger hose, lower the blood pressure. So the reflexes we primarily use day to day are baroreceptor reflexes, chemoreceptors, a little bit more on a emergency uh, situation. So if your blood pressure has fallen, I don't care why, doesn't make any difference why, it's simply a change in your body's position, you're bleeding, you've lost some blood volume, you have some sort of disorder or disease that made your blood pressure fall. Your baroreceptor reflex will want to make your blood pressure go up. So your normal response to a falling blood pressure by the baroreceptor reflex, those baroreceptors in the aortic arch and carotid sinus, to the control centers, cardioregulatory and vasomotor centers in the medulla oblongata, remember that, will stimulate your heart to beat faster, thank you norepinephrine, and sympathetic division, vasoconstriction of those muscular arteries and arterioles to make blood pressure go up. If your blood CO2 is too high or your blood O2 is too low, chemoreceptors in the same locations, aortic arch and carotid sinus, will send information to your medulla telling me we need blood pressure to go up. We have to get out, spit out that CO2 and get in some O2. So the chemoreceptor reflex will increase your blood pressure by increasing heart rate, norepinephrine, vasoconstriction, sympathetic division. That's the chemoreceptor reflex. You're not gonna see that in minute to minute regulation as much as the baroreceptor reflex, but these are both nervous system, very quick, lightning fast reflexes to change your blood pressure. If your blood pressure has gone up for some reason, again, don't care why. You had a sudden increase in your blood volume. You're under extreme stress. You have a cardiac arrhythmia. I don't care what it is. Probably not two hours in that. How's that? There we go. I don't care what the cause is. Your baroreceptor reflex will attempt to lower your blood pressure by reducing heart rate and dilating those vessels, the muscular arteries and arterioles. So if your blood pressure has suddenly gone up, you will have a reflex to try to make it go back down.
if your blood CO2 gets too low or your blood O2 is too high, this wouldn't happen very often, but then the chemoreceptor reflex will kick in to try to reduce your blood pressure by lowering your heart rate, acetylcholine does that, and dilating those muscular arteries and arterioles. Two reflexes, baroreceptor day in, day out, to correct for changes in blood pressure. And these are constantly going on, these baroreceptor reflexes. I've had, I don't know how many corrections in just this time I've been speaking with you, as have you in just this time you've been listening to me. Now, I wonder if I could come up with some sort of example or demonstration to maybe help you understand this idea. Hmm. Now, one question lots of people have, and it's a totally logical question for all of you good A&P students to have, is if I have these nervous system reflexes to correct for blood pressure all the time, the baroreceptor and chemoreceptor reflexes, how then could I develop chronically high blood pressure or hypertension? These high blood pressures that just go on for days, months, years that require me to take blood pressure reducing medications. Or how could I end up with chronically low blood pressure, hypotension? In fact, some of the people hearing my voice, you might have positional hypotension. You get up from a laying down or seated position and suddenly feel dizzy, maybe even pass out because your blood pressure falls so quickly. And if I've got these super lightning fast reflexes, how could I ever have these things? Shouldn't my nervous system correct for all of them? Well, one explanation for how it is that we can develop these chronic conditions of hyper or hypotension is that old friend of ours, think back to 223, sensory adaptation or accommodation. Consider a person who has a chronically high blood pressure because of obstructed blood vessels. So the baroreceptor reflex keeps trying to correct for it, but the sensory stimulus does not go away because the blockage is still there. 
So that idea of your nervous system adapting to or accommodating a relatively constant stimulus is one reason we can have chronic blood pressure abnormalities. Because if you keep going long enough, eventually your nervous system in effect throws up its hands and says, I don't think I can do anything about this now. So that idea of sensory adaptation or accommodation helps explain that. So I hope this little video in some way has helped you understand a little bit more about nervous regulation of blood pressure. And if it hasn't, you at least got to see your professor squirted with a hose.